This morning, I want to talk to you on pressure. Say pressure. How many of you don't know what pressure is? Can I see your hand? Okay, you all know what pressure is. We all go through pressures in life, isn't it? From Zahal to everyone in this place. Okay, I thought Zahal is the youngest. No. <laughs> okay, from Hannah to everyone in this house, we all go through pressures in life. Okay? Some of you are already under pressure for tomorrow's job. You are saying, oh, it's already Sunday. Tomorrow is a working day. Oh, I wish that Sunday never ends. Yeah? Some schools are opening. Starting from tomorrow, oh, my holidays are over. Everyone is under pressure. Everyone is under pressure. The other day, I went to a, a fuel station. And after filling, I went to check the blow in my tire, okay? And there was a little less air in my tire. So I got it filled, okay? Anyone went to, yeah, one person knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, two person, thank you, Jesus. I think sometimes it is good to have pressure. Yeah? If you have too much pressure, you will burst. If you don't have pressure at all, you cannot move forward. Though you are moving forward, you will not have a mileage. <laughs> yeah? You will get tired. You will not feel comfortable. But you, when you have a pressure equally, when you have pressure that is needed, then your vehicle moves smoothly. Amen? Everyone in the Bible went through a pressure. Pressure is good. Okay, pressure is good. If you know how to handle a pressure, the pressure that thought will kill you will be the same pressure that will push you forward into your destiny. Okay. Pressure is good. Sometimes God puts you in a place where you are pressurized and you are fighting God. You're fighting people. You're fighting situation. Why God is not answering my prayers? In fact, God is the one who sent it to you so that you can move from your comfort zone and fix your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. God, sometimes he intentionally puts you under pressure. And pressure is what defines you. It is easy to sing song, to shout, to jump, and to put a smile on your face when everything is going right. Okay? But what do you do when you are pressurized? When you have a problems in your family? When you have problems in finances? When your career is not going anywhere? You are under pressure. Will you still hold on to God? Or you will say, Okay, I came to Jesus and Jesus did not do anything, so I leave. Pressure is good. Sometimes you need to thank God for the pressures in life. Because sometimes those pressures will push you into your prayer. Without pressure, sometimes you don't even pray. Only a few people have a life of prayer. But some of us, we need pressures. God has to send pressure so we can go find where God is. Pressure is good. Pressure is good. How many of you know that Jesus went through pressure? Yeah? Jesus went through pressure. After the last supper, he went to the Mount of Olives where he was praying and he said, Father, if it is possible, if it is possible, I can't take it. This is too much for me. I can't take it. But if it is possible, 
please take this cup away from me but not my will but yours be done you see Jesus was under pressure Jesus the son of God the Lord the Savior of the world he was under pressure and the greatest apostle in the New Testament Paul 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 verse 28 says he was always under pressure who do you think you are that you know you not go through pressure yeah are you more anointed than Jesus are you more anointed than Apostle Paul the greatest men in the New Testament went through pressure but they did not allow pressure to control them they did not allow pressure to have a hold on their lives they did not allow pressure to define who they are they did not allow pressure to kill them in fact they fought against pressure they handled pressure very well amen everyone everyone in the Bible went through pressure if you ask Abraham he received a promise from God that he will be a father 25 years he had to wait he was under pressure he had like probably he had a South Indian parents if he had a South Indian parents even that is more painful every now and then they will come and ask okay what is happening with you Abraham would say I have a promise of God it's coming it's coming when will it come I don't know but it's coming Abraham had to stand to his feet under pressure forget Abraham David he's facing a giant in his teens he said, I can't face him but I go I fight him in the name of the Lord the God of heaven's armies I cannot fight him I'm too small I'm too weak I cannot fight him I need God with the help of God David killed Goliath how about Daniel in the lion's den oh you think it's easy <laughs> what if if you are put in lion's den because of your faith in God is it easy to go into a lion's den just because you believe in God Daniel was under great pressure Shadrach Meshach Abednego said no king I do not want to compromise on this no you will be thrown in the fiery furnace I don't care Oh, is it easy to go into the fiery furnace? No, no, it's not. It is painful. It's a killer. I cannot go into it. But they said, no. I know our God is able. Even if it doesn't save us, it's okay. We will go into it. If you are in pressure, if you don't have a control over your pressure, the pressure will have control over your life. What do you do when you are under pressure? You run to God. Amen. You run to God. You lean on Him. Proverbs 5, 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. The sad thing, that the church will do when it is under pressure is it stop coming to church stop praying stop meeting pastors stop having fellowship when you isolate yourself from God and the church God gave you you become a target for the enemy amen when you are under pressure run to God Thank you, Jesus. Today I want to talk to you on pressure in evangelism. <laughs> How many
many of you feel that evangelism is easy? No? Everyone thinks it's hard? It's hard? Okay, the reason why we as a church fail to evangelize is because we are under pressure. We are under pressure. Okay, before I go further, I want you to know that this is not a church. I said this is not a church. This is a place of worship. Then where is church? You are church. You are church. Say, I am a church. I am a church. This is a place of worship. This is a place of fellowship. This is the family. But I am a church. Amen. I personally feel with all my heart that church is a place where you come, you get revived, you get equipped and go out and live like a church. Yeah? This is not church. You are a church. Church is not four walls. It's a place of worship. You are a church. Say, I am a church. I am a church. I am a church. Wherever God has placed you, wherever God has placed you, you are called to be a church there. Okay? The reason why our churches are not growing because we have left everything on the pastors. Oh, pastors should go for evangelism. Pastors should conduct some meetings. Pastors should go for a house visiting. Pastors should do an evangelism. Pastors should do a discipleship training. Pastors. Yes, pastor has his role. But you have your part to play in building the kingdom of God. Amen. And I believe if every one of you, if every one of you live your life believing and thinking that you are a church I think very soon that this place will be too small for you Amen How many of you we are like 35, 30, 35 Like 30, 35 of you go out and live like a church Live a church Speak God's word Have a lifestyle of worship Carry the presence of God. Demonstrate the power of God. Wherever God has placed you. If you live a ch like a church. If you live your life like a church. Next week you will be. Like if you are 30 now next week you will be 100. Next week next week itself you will be at least 100 people pressure pressure one of the reasons the Holy Spirit came on the early apostles was to be a witness yeah not just to speak in tongues and sit at home brother what are you doing I am praying in tongues good you pray in tongues The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you And then you will be my witnesses The, the reason you are filled with the Holy Spirit Is because so that you can be a witness You can be a witness Say I am called to be a witness I am called to be a witness I am called to be a witness Amen, amen. You should witness Jesus every day. You should witness Jesus all the days of your life. How many of you, see the reason, the very reason you are here is because you have experienced the goodness of God over your life. Yes or no? The very reason you are here because God has been good to you. 
What do you do? Evangelism is so easy. Evangelism is so easy. I don't know why some people get beaten up by sharing the gospel. Evangelism is easy. All you need to do is, I believed in Jesus. This is what he has done. You believe in Jesus. He will do the same. Finish. You are called to be the witness of Jesus Christ. Some of you are like, okay, will they lis even listen to me? That's not your problem. Or will they be convicted by my words? You are not here to convince anyone. Okay, Jesus did not tell you to go and convince people. If you have to convince, probably you will end up in an argument. Okay? You are not here to convince anyone. You are here to be a witness. All you need to do is, I believe in Jesus. Jesus has been good to me. You believe in Jesus, he will be good to you. The reason why we don't evangelize is because we feel so shy. You can talk about World Cup 2019. Uh, everyone is excited. You should make opportunities to preach the gospel. Every situation of your life gives you an opportunity to witness Jesus. Every, 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 every situation, every circumstances, it gives you an opportunity to witness Jesus. It is our choice whether we want to witness or not. The church grew because there were people who were committed to preach the gospel. There were people who were committed to preach the gospel. Sometimes God will bring persecution your way so that you can preach the gospel. Yeah? How many of you know the early church got persecuted? Yeah? Because Jesus said, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the world. But the church... They received the Holy Spirit. They were breaking bread. They were praying. They were listening to apostles' teaching. They were having fellowship. But they were comfortable where they were. God had to send persecution. And that's the reason. Because they did not believe Acts chapter 1 verse 8. They did not believe and they did not do Acts 8 1 8. Therefore, God had to do Acts 8 1. The Bible says on that day the great persecution broke out on the church and except for the apostles, everyone was scattered. Everyone was scattered. And wherever they went, they preached the gospel. Amen. Wherever they went, they preached the gospel. They preached the gospel. If you are not witnessing if you are not evangelizing, God knows how to make you His witnesses. God knows how to make you evangelize. It is our choice whether we want it in an easy way or the other way. Witnessing Jesus is your call. It's the purpose of the church. It's the purpose of the church. We all are called to witness. You don't have any other option. You need to be a witness where God has placed you. You need to be a witness to the people God brought into your life. You need to be a witness wherever He has placed you. God will not ask you for an account for the people in Sri Lanka. Yeah. God will not ask you for an account for the people in Banargata. Okay? He will definitely ask you for an account of the people who are 
connected to you, who are around you, whom you meet every day. We go have chai with our friends, have breakfast, lunch, dinner with our friends. Everything is good. But have you tried to find one second to say that Jesus is God? Evangelism is so easy. You need to be creative. You need to be creative. You need to be creative. For you to evangelize, you need to understand the heartbeat of God. You need to understand the purpose of God for the people in and around your life. What is God's purpose for you? To be his witness. Today I'm talking about evangelism. Okay, Pastor Bridget told you I want you to preach on evangelism. I said, okay. I love evangelism. I love evangelism. I love evangelism. The reason why we don't evangelize, why we don't, we are not witnessing is because we do not understand God's perspective for that person whom God has brought into your life. Okay? You may think, oh, pastor, he will not listen to me. Oh, pastor, he's very hard-hearted man. Oh, hard-hearted woman. Oh, pastor, he he's against Christianity. But the will of God for everyone is that they know and understand that Jesus is Lord. Yeah. It is God's will that none of them perish. It is God's will that everyone receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior. It is God's will that everyone whom God created will be with Him in heaven. It is God's will. As long as you don't see people in your life from God's perspective, you will not feel that burden to share a gospel to them. Do you know that Jesus died for that person in your life? Do you know that Jesus shed his blood for that person? Jesus died for everyone. He shed his blood for everyone. He rose from the dead for everyone. And is coming back for everyone. Everyone who believes in him will go home with him. But the people who will be left over, they will be crying out to you saying, You were my friend. We used to meet. We used to talk. We used to have fellowship. We used to play together. But you did not tell me the, about Jesus. You did not tell me about Jesus. When you reach heaven, there will be people in heaven because of you. And there will be people in hell because of you. Because you did not dare to tell them about Jesus. You need to have God's perspective about every single soul in your life. Amen. Number two, after having a perspective, you need to have God's power. Say power. Okay, you are saying power. Power, Leslie. Okay, you need to have power. You need to have power. The Bible says, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God. The reason why you're not experiencing the power of God in your life is because you're not using the gospel. Okay? The Bible says, These signs shall follow them that believe in the gospel. When you preach the gospel, gospel manifests. When you preach that Jesus is Lord, Jesus manifests. 
when you present Jesus as a healer Jesus healing power will manifest the way you present Jesus as so Jesus will present himself when you meet people when you meet people you should have an understanding about your friend what he or she is going through and based on it you need to tell them for example if there any if there is anyone sick you need to make a way to tell them that Jesus is a healer you need to tell them that Jesus paid the price for them to be healed and encourage them that they will be healed if they put their trust in Jesus how simple is that how simple is that you need God's power and God's power is present in God's word in the gospel no gospel no power no gospel no power this morning I want to encourage you this week find at least three people okay find at least three people pray for them pray for them and go meet talk to them just be a witness just tell them the goodness God has done in your life how many of you will do it one person two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay if 10 of you 11 of you 12 of you if 11 12 of you you go and preach witness Jesus to three people 12 into 3 36 isn't it I'm very good at mathematics meet me later whenever you're free I'll tell you my stories okay if you all are serious about this if you can only meet three people three people this week by next Sunday you will have 36 new people in the church yeah 36 new people let's say that six people needs a fasting and prayer at least 30 of them will be here yeah and the Bible says if one person repents the whole of heaven rejoices we are so busy in fixing our life okay we are so busy fixing our life pastor you don't know what have what's happening in my life no I don't want to know please you know God knows that's enough you don't have to tell everyone but I want you to know that God has a desire in his heart that none of his child should go to hell and God needs you God need you he need, he's in need of you he's in need of you angels cannot evangelize though angels can go meet but people cannot connect with the angels if you can you know your friends isn't it you can connect with your friends so easily connect to them this week talk to them encourage them pray for them if you feel if you see anyone depressed go talk, tell him is there anything that I can pray for you this morning we were reading first Corinthians 13 love is kind love is patient love is okay do you really mean it okay do you really mean it if you really love someone you will go and tell them about Jesus if you really love someone you will go and tell them about Jesus oh pastor they will persecute me it's okay they think that you are mad it's okay let them think just by thinking you will not become mad yeah oh they will not listen to me it's okay have you even tried have you even tried Oh, pastor, I know, I know, I know, no. They will never, never believe. 
it's okay give a try give a try give a try there's nothing wrong in trying isn't it because when tomorrow god asks you okay why didn't you witness to this person who was playing a keyboard you say okay i thought he's already saved <laughs> example <laughs> okay i thought he will not listen to me but if you even try if you try when god asks you god i tried my best it didn't work finish yeah i have come to tell you one thing go evangelize go evangelize be a witness of god i know it is pressurizing but you don't have an option imagine 30 of you you all gather here see this is a, a vision that i have for my church i'm sharing my vision with you like okay 30 of you okay 30 churches coming here every sunday to worship god and going back and living a church outside this place and every sunday as a church you come and your people also come along with you how cool is that yeah 30 of you you get trained you get equipped you get imparted you get filled with the holy spirit you receive the gifts of the holy spirit you operate in the gifts of the holy spirit you receive everything what god is doing in this church through a man of god in this church you receive from him and you go out and you use it in your respective churches and every sunday you come you bring your people along i think that would be a very very good scene that's the dream for my church that's what i'm dreaming that i have every sunday it will be a, a time of training equipping strengthening imparting and when they leave the church they will go as a church blessing people imparting healing casting out demons preaching the gospel saving souls and bringing all the souls here and worshiping god together i think that's i think god would be so happy looking at that isn't it this morning i want to ask you how many of you want to live like a church I want to I'm counting see four five six seven eight nine ten twelve fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty okay twenty of you okay twenty of you if you live like a church okay twenty one <laughs> <laughs> See, because I'm going to pray over your life. I believe that I carry a different grace on my life to evangelize. Okay? I, can, I am passionate about evangelism. I'm passionate about discipling. I'm passionate to see people heal and deliver. Okay. I'll tell you before we pray, do I have time? Okay. I'll tell you, the day I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, that day itself I felt the call of God on my life to go and win souls, to go and preach the gospel. Okay? I understood. I did not know much about, about the theology. I did not know much. Though I grew up in a Sunday school, I knew Sunday school story like Zahal knows Daniel's story, that story, this story. I knew all the stories. But when God had chosen me, when God told me to preach, I did not have a word. All I had was what God has done in my life. I went from village to village, village to village, village to village, telling what Jesus has done to me. I want to tell you first, first village, first 
time stepping out of my house I went I don't know where to go those days I took a cycle I started my journey I went like for six or seven kilometers I went to a village those days no guitar no sound system no lightings nothing we would, we would go meet few people and tell them that we are preaching about Jesus in certain place if you are free please join that's a village probably God's grace was on us and everyone whom we met and invited they were all there okay and I did not know much about Jesus as I told but I told them what God has done in my life because my life was in a mess my life was so bad that coming out of it was impossible when I shared my life when I shared my testimony when I when I was when I became the witness of God people people understood that Jesus is God because sometimes we witness and even sometimes when we testify when pastors ask you to give a testimony it will all be about you you know pastor I did that I did this but my testimony was nothing I was a bad boy but God I was sick but God I was addicted but God when every time I pointed to God's greatness people began to understand that Jesus can heal them too people understood that Jesus can set them free too so by the end of the testimony I asked people how many of you believe that Jesus will do the same to you there were so many people said yes I believe I believe and trust me God is my witness so many people gave their lives to Jesus that evening okay when I left that village when I was coming back home before I left that village a, one woman she came to me and said pastor can you pray for my mother-in-law she has been in bed for three years I said what happened to her she said she was out in a field somewhere and the ox had got her and from then on till now she is in bed it's been three years that she is in bed she cannot get up of the bed she is so tired so sick I've been listening to your testimony you've been telling me that Jesus is the Lord you've been telling me that Jesus can heal you've been telling me that Jesus with the Jesus nothing is impossible and she said will you come and pray for my mother-in-law usually they'll not ask prayers for the mother-in-laws but this woman anyways she probably I think she loved her mother-in-law or she might be tired of taking care of her she said pastor somehow fix this or pray a prayer of blessing okay so I went I was under pressure now I'm so excited to see soul saved I saw like headaches gone, backaches gone, but now this woman has been bedridden for three years. And now I am under pressure. I had no one. I took one person along with me. And that person was like, brother, it's time, brother. It's already 9.30. We have to travel back. I said, yes, I know. I was under pressure. What if, if I go pray and nothing happens? all this while I was shouting and with the boldness I was telling that Jesus will do nothing is impossible with Jesus this woman heard every word that I said and now she is taking me home and with her like few villages are coming let's see what this boy will do I went into her house she was lying in a bed I asked Amma how are you she said how many of you know Canada? She said, Parvagilla pa. Which means, okay. I asked her, Do you believe in Jesus? Like, do you want to eat idli for breakfast? You don't have an option. When mom cooks idli, you have to eat idli. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes, 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 yes. I said, okay. Can I pray for you? Again, when pastors ask you, Can I pray for you? You don't have an option. 
Yeah. She said, she said, okay, pray. I said, in Jesus' name, be healed. And I asked her, Amma, how are you feeling? One sentence, in Jesus' name, be healed. Okay? Because my friend was like, he was pinching me from behind saying, Bro, I have a night shift. 10 o'clock, I have to be in office. I asked her, How are you feeling now? She said in Kannada, Parvagilla pa. What did she say? Parvagilla. And I'm like, Parvagilla? You really mean Parvagilla? Other, okay. Do you want to walk? She's been bedridden for three years. I asked her, if you feel Parvagilla, you need to sit on your bed. If you feel Parvagilla, you need to stand to your feet. If you really feel Parvagilla, you need to walk. When I asked her, do you want to walk? Again, when passes are something, Okay, then I from one end and her daughter-in-law from the other, we both helped her sit. Okay, and while she's sitting, I'm again cross-checking again. How are you feeling? Parvagilla pa. When you say parvagilla, come, let's stand. We both held her and help her stand. I asked her, how are you feeling now? She said, Parvagila, come, let's walk. And then we both are holding this woman who was bedridden for three years. Okay? We literally walked one step, two step, three step. I asked her, how are you feeling now? Please, this is a village. If anything goes wrong, they will taste me. I, so, how are you feeling now? She said, Parvagilla. When she said Parvagilla, last time I said to that daughter-in-law, now you leave. She says she is Parvagilla. If she falls, that's at her expense. So, we both began to walk. One, two, three, four, five, six. I left. Seven. She continued to walk. Amen. Hey, that was first time, pa. And for that, my pastors did not encourage. My pastor said, Hey, Jeevan, for, for you to go and evangelize, you need to sit under me for one year. I have to teach you how to pray. I have to teach you how to evangelize. I have to teach you how to pray for the sick. I said, Pastor, I don't want. I feel that Lord wants me to go. I feel in my spirit. I'm called to evangelize. I'm called to heal the sick. I'm called to deliver people. And that night, that night, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't believe what I have witnessed. Then I came back home. I'm on my bed. I'm thinking, God, what happened? How can this be possible? I gave my life to Jesus one week ago. I haven't read this Bible enough. I have, I'm not yet committed to pray. All I had was a desire in my heart to go and tell people about Jesus. All I had was that people should experience the love of God. Amen. Amen. I think when you have a heart for people, when you have a heart for people, when you have a words of thanksgiving for what He has done in your life, when you go and meet people, People will be saved. People will be healed. People will be delivered. People
people will be blessed it is not because of you it is not because of your prayer life it is not because of your church attendance all of that is good reading god's word is important praying is important coming to church is important fasting is important but with all of this you need to go and live the call of god on your life and i am come to tell you that you are called to be a witness of jesus every one of you every one of you we are called to be a witness of jesus when we go god comes when you preach god backs up his word because his word says god is saying i am waiting to perform my word when you preach god's word god will come into action this morning i want to challenge you i want to challenge you if you want to live a supernatural life we all been talking about supernatural we all been talking about revival we are dreaming for revival but do you know it starts from you it starts from you the moment you decide to go out the moment you decide to witness someone the moment you decide to lay your hand on the sick that's when revival begins as long as you continue to stir up the fire that god has put in you until you fan the fire of god in you you will never be disappointed you will never be disappointed i will never be disappointed all it takes is you taking a step of faith saying god i want to do it when i meet you i don't want to meet you empty handed your life do you know your life is a gift from god your life is a gift from god whatever you do in this life is a gift back to god your life is a gift say god one day you have to take this life you say god this is the life that you have given me and this is what i have done with this life see the souls that i have won see the people whom i have healed see the people whom i have delivered see the people to whom i displayed you nothing matters god will not ask you how many houses you have he will not ask you which car you drove he will not ask you how much money you have in your bank account he will not ask you any of these things he will only ask you my son my daughter what have you done for me oh god i prayed you prayed because you were in need what have you done for me oh i came to church you came to church to refill yourself god what have you done for me god i witnessed you i told people about you i prayed for people in your name god will say well done this is what i was expected this is what i was expecting from you evangelism is so good once you taste evangelism i'll tell you you will not stop evangelizing there were days i i go alone i go alone sit somewhere have chai when there is a person next to me having chai i'll just start a conversation hey how are you what are you doing where do you work and he'll ask me hey what are you doing oh i'm a pastor i preach opportunity i believe in jesus do you believe in jesus no okay jesus has done this to me if you believe he will do it to you simple bye bro i paid your bill come let's go as long as you are committed to evangelize you be assured the heaven's power will back you up yeah i have I have experience this is just a story this is just a story one more one more example one more example okay see because i have so many testimonies 
Uh, I went to Mumbai the other day. I was invited to minister there. Uh, and as soon as I landed in Mumbai, I got to know one of the church members passed away. Okay? Uh, I got to know that there was some fire broke out and this person was 80% burnt. 80% burnt. So they said, Pastor, we will drive you to a hotel. You can freshen up and later we can meet uh, for the meeting. I said, no, 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 no. Let's go to the hospital. 80% burnt. The doctors have declared dead. Okay. Try karne mein kya jata hai? Hey, kine? Let's try. Let's try. They brought him to hospital thinking that hospital will do something. If the, if the people have trust in hospital so much, we believe in God who is the healer. Who is the healer? Who is the life giver himself? Why not try him? So I said, let's go. We both went. I and that pastor, we both went. For the first time, I'm seeing someone burnt like that. His face was ugly. Burnt. I couldn't see a skin on his body. Okay. I said, pastor, let's pray. And we began to pray, we began to pray, we began to pray. We began, he passed away like three hours before I reached the hospital. We began to pray. And as we were praying, this person's eyelids shook. He probably opened his eyes once and closed. I've noticed and I thought probably this is my faith seeing. I said, Pastor, let's pray, Pastor, with our eyes open. So this pastor also praying with his eyes open. We were like seeing for a movement. We were seeing, expecting that something will shake. Probably he's, he will open his eyes. Probably he will like breathe. We were expecting something. And as we we're praying, this pastor noticed. Now this pastor noticed. Pastor, I see his eyeballs moving. And immediately we call for a doctor. And the doctor said, no, it is against our rule. We cannot put him back into the uh, whatever. He said, we have already declared him dead. We prayed. I just felt that he moved his eyeballs. But we couldn't be persistent against the doctors. But I feel in my spirit that if we had prayed and if we had put him in the oxygen and all probably he would have come back to life amen there is nothing too hard for God I want you to believe this nothing is too difficult for Jesus nothing is too difficult nothing is too difficult nothing is too difficult trust God the reason why we don't evangelize is because we have a preoccupied thoughts Oh, I feel so shy. Oh, he will not listen to me. Keep all of that aside. This week, make a point to go meet people. Talk to people. Pray for the people. And can I tell you, when you pray, God will use you. When you pray, God will heal people. When you pray, God will deliver people. When you pray, miracles will happen. Amen. When you pray, the kingdom of God will come. When you pray, the kingdom of darkness has to leave that person and place. In the name of Jesus.